If you're seeing my face on this camera right now, you already know what time it is. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, well, we got a nice insult. I'm well, being the title while we're giving it away, but look what we got here today. You see a box on the floor? You know what that means. It's mod day, baby. Here comes Kitty Cat, of course. Let's get this puppy opened. Ooh, we got some plastic. We got Kitty Cat hiding in there. Kitty! Kitty Cat puts boxes. All right, let's see. I don't know how well this thing is actually packaged. Seems decent. Sturdy, solid. Now, fun fact, this isn't actually the color of the car. We're gonna have to paint this. I mean, it's, it's in decent shape. Like, look at the end caps are actually right. I'm gonna paint those CGM. Um, the blade itself's in pretty decent shape. It's got a nice little scratch right there. But as you know, if you watch the last video, which will be right here, bloop, if you watch the last video, you will see that we're gonna wrap this and hopefully replace this with the carbon fiber one eventually. The carbon fiber one's like 200 something dollars, and I don't really have 200 something dollars to spend on a blade right now. But look at this. Oof. This side's cleaner than the other side. See the bottom? Clean. This is actually an OEM one I bought it used and I really, I really, I almost went full carbon fiber on this thing. But I really wanted an OEM one at the same time just because I like OEM fit and finish and quality. So I had to just go OEM and pick one I've used. First minor villain. When I say minor, I mean very, very minor. Let me show you this. This is an OEM vein, right? And look at it. It has these little, I don't know what the fuck this is on the bottom. It's like a piece of plastic, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm obviously not going to drill a hole off just for this because it'd be pointless since I have a blob eye and it's not a hawk eye. There's no pre-drilled holes. So I'm just going to break this off or cut it off with the Dremel. I'm going to do something. I'm just going to get rid of this. Just, you know, if you get one and it comes with this, I'm chopping this. I pop the caps off too. These are very easy. Look at it. You just pull off the little clip from right here on the inside. Oops. You pull off the clip from right there on the inside. Oops, I just hit my wing. <laughs> and then you just push these straight up and they pop right out. Easy. All right, so after fiddling with the roof vein for about 10 minutes, I'm pretty sure I got it in a very good spot that I want it to be in. Let me show you how I did this though. So you see, it's got a little bit of 3M tape on the bottom still from, because it's obviously it's an OEM one. So what I did was I measured from here to here is about three inches. And then from the top of the vein right here to right here is about two inches. From the vein to the silver part is about two inches. I just made sure they were both the same on each side. And that's pretty much it. I mean, that looks, pretty solid to me. I think it looks like a solid spot for the vein to go. Small gap right here between the windshield and the vein itself. And I don't know. I think it looks pretty good right there. So I'm I'm gonna stick it here. Here's why I think it goes here. So if you can see this, I don't know if you can see it or not very well. But so how how the vein is how the brackets are shaped for the vein, it's like there's a certain spot on the car where it'll, it'll sit nice and flat and flush and it doesn't move at all, like it doesn't wobble or anything. So as soon as I found that spot on this side, I taped it down with the yellow tape, went to the other side, moved it up and down a little bit, found the same spot, like I just, I felt it out, I felt the same spot, taped it down and that's when I measured everything and it lined up. So I'm gonna go with this is where it goes. I could be wrong, but I mean, it, it, it looks good to me. So it's my car and you know, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna risk it all and put it right there. If you have another STI you could use, we have Yef's 06 STI. He sent me some measurements too, and those, the measurements line up pretty much with what he said it should be. So, one based off of this, I eyeballed it and it came out pretty straight, so let's do this. One more thing I wanna say before we start drilling. Make life easy for yourself and use some high quality brand new drill bits. We're drilling through metal here, but you gotta make sure you don't mess anything up. And you could also, if you wanted to, you could like, you know, mark it, take the roof paint off and put tape right here, but I don't want to risk me at all. I'm just gonna, I mark it in there just in case this thing slips, but I have a tape down right here, tape down right here, tape down with the 3 and tape that's already on there. Like it's still holding up a little bit. And I'm just gonna quarter inch drill bit, quarter inch drill bit, followed by a uh, 5 16 because I'm actually rib nutting this. This is the proper way to do it is to rib nut. Make life easy. Don't go drilling holes through your whole fucking, your whole fucking car. Just rib nut it. Make life easy for yourself. Buy a whole package is super cheap. Got these from Fizz, so Kissy let me borrow this. He has a rib nut tool, I do not. He let me borrow his rib nut tool and give me some rib nuts. So, you can find these on Amazon, they're pretty cheap. Or you can even find them at Harbor Freight if you don't want to spend a lot of money.
so you see how easy that was when you actually have a good set of drill bits. Those drill bits are brand new, so I just went barely just a little bit of effort. Just tap your tap your trigger just a little bit because you don't want to go super ham on it. If you try to go too hard on it right away, your drill's gonna fly all over the place. So just new drill bits, just feather the trigger just a little bit. Easy, you go right through like that. Now I'm gonna take the roof vein off, make the holes a little bigger for the rib nets, take the rib nets on there, and hopefully it lines up. Hopefully. And just like that, your rib nets are in. Simple as that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The rib nets I use are actually a quarter inch rib nets. They're not, I was looking for, we were looking for the M6 ones, but we couldn't find the, the, um, the actual rib nets for them. So I used a quarter inch rib nets, which is standard size, but it's all good, it works. So what I did, drilled it out with a quarter inch, drill, uh, 316 drill bit first, followed by a 2364 drill bit. And that's the perfect size for these quarter inch rib nets. So I'm just gonna do the other side and We'll put the vein on and hopefully it lines up still. So as you can see, it lines up, which is nice, which means I don't have to pull any, any rib nets out or any drill any more holes or fuck with any more holes. So got lucky on that. I do wanna okay, so here's okay, here's my idea now. Let me tell you guys this. So Obviously, we wrapped the wing yesterday. Well, because yeah, today's Tuesday, I mean, I'm recording this, so we wrapped the wing yesterday. I want to wrap this because I've seen these in carbon fiber and I really want to replace this with a carbon fiber piece. So, I will probably wrap that. Let's see what time is it? It's already 8.30. Uh, I might wrap it today, I might wrap it tomorrow. You know what? Let's just do it today. I'll take this upstairs and I'll get that wrap and then we'll throw it back on and that's how we will. Oh, we got to paint these. We got to paint the side pieces too, still. So, we'll wrap this. We'll take the car out tomorrow in the daylight, since the video's not going to come out for a couple days. And I'll show you this in carbon, and this with the carbon wrap, and we will see how it looks. And I will show you guys the wrapping process, because obviously you guys watched me wrap this. If you watched the last video, if you haven't watched the last video, click it, click it. Alright, so let me just finish putting these bolts on, and then we will take this upstairs and wrap it. Okay, I lied. I'm not gonna wrap that vein in carbon fiber. Oh, it's actually back on the car already. I decided against it because I already know what carbon fiber looks like, so I'm gonna put the end caps on that are finally painted, uh, take this carbon fiber wrap off now, and I have an oil leak in the SDI. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like the way this paint job came out. Let's look at it right here. It's kind of spotty right there, but the rest of it looks okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw them on right now. And this weekend, we will, which will probably be in the next video, we will repaint this. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna repaint this blade instead. So I'm gonna repaint this roof vein, matte black instead of wrapping in the carbon. We'll repaint these, we'll put primer, reprimer them, repaint them, and hope they come out a lot better. I'm running out of silver paint, well, crystal gray paint, so I hope I don't completely run out. But, you know, is what it is. Can't really get mad. I think dust blew on them because I had them in the front of the garage this time instead of the back, and sometimes dust blows under the garage door, sadly. And I think that's what happened on this part because this was the part that was kind of sticking out, and that's why I got all full of spots. But it's okay. Okay, now that I can think straight now, because it's the next day, it was leaking, I think, from the PCV valve, aka this little thing right there. I put a new clamp on the bottom one because that's where it looked like it was leaking from. And I just need to put back the throttle body. Throttle body, bypass valve, intercooler, and we'll test start it and hope there's no leaks because I had to pull the restart curves off and it was a pain in the ass to get it back on because Tomei put it's back on. So let me just throw this shit back on and see if this works. It's getting dark out here. So turn on all your lights. Okay, no, here's a serious note. Here is the finished product with the roof vein. Ooh, so subtle yet just what I was looking for. I really like the roof veins. I really do. Look at that. Oh, look at Nikki in the video too right there. Your paint looks so good. And I feel like I got it in the OEM spot, I really do. Ooh. Look at that car. So good. 
Like it's on there nice and straight. It looks good. This is a good picture. I'll probably screenshot this. Thumbnail right there, baby. Woo! So good. Rate this mod though. Just do me a favor and rate the mod. What do you think of the roofing? I love it personally, especially if I take the wing off because I do want a carbon fiber trunk. I got a little spot on my hand. I do want a carbon fiber trunk, so I might take the wing off and I think having the roof paint on really makes the car not look so naked. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Look at that. Looks really good though. Really, really good. So there's only one thing left to do for this video before we close it out finally. And let me show you this quick, quick tutorial. Are you ready for this? So if you've never seen the JDM taillights in how the way they set up on the blob eyes and Japan, obviously, JDM. This is how it goes. So you have your running light, brake, brake. So if I hit the brake, these two will turn on, and this is my running light. This is the USDM setup. Running light, running light, brake. Personally, I like the JDM setup a lot better. So I'll have two super bright brake lights and one real small running light. I think it looks a lot cleaner. Let me shut the trunk. There. I personally think it looks a lot cleaner. Eh? Eh? Nice little circular running light. Two square running lights. Yeah. Let's do that. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Alright, so obviously this this is the free way to do it, which is pretty much how everyone does it. Well not everyone. I've seen some people do it different ways, but this is how I do it because I want two brake lights still. So you see how we have let me show you this. <coughs> okay. So you see how there's one bulb here, one bulb here, and one bulb here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take this one out, and you're gonna take the middle one out, and you're gonna swap places with them. So this is gonna be a running light, and this will be a brake light, right? But if you want this one, to, there's, you could have this one on as a running light, or you could disconnect one of the filaments on the bulbs and make it a brake light only, which is what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Pretty straightforward stuff. So swap this one with this one first. It's gonna be the gray one and the brown one are gonna swap spots. So this is the fun part. Do you see how there's two filaments in here? A lower one and you have the upper one, right? You need to follow the pins for the upper one and pretty much just unpin it from this, from the little base itself, because I watch. So there's four pins, right? Two are for the lower, two are for the upper. You unpin the upper and you are good to go. Let me show you in a mirror now. Just take a close look at this. Four, and when I come back and show you, there will only be two. They're really easy to get off. You just unfold them. With You could use your fingers or whatever you want and they'll come right off. Let me just do this off camera so I can make sure I don't mess it up. In the case of the stock bulbs, it's the inside ones. You see those one right there? It's the two inside ones. Those are the high ones. And if I'm wrong, we're about to find out right now. So I'm going to break these off and then we'll plug the bulb back in. It should be running on the lower filaments only, which are brake lights. The upper filaments or the running lights. So basically just get it and just like Bend it back and forth a few times and it'll break off. Bend this back and forth, back and forth. And there goes one, pop that to the side. And there goes the other one, just fell right to the floor. You just plug your bulb back in to your harness and that should be it. So now for our running lights, we have the two dots. And let me put the camera right here. And I'll hit the brake and you will see the brake lights. So much better, look at that. Mmm. Hi Sasha. Look at this pretty princess. Look at this dookie head. Meow. My kitty cat. My kitty cat. And this is where we end the video. Top of the countertop like always. Got kitty cat joining us. Now that was the easy that's literally the easiest way to install a roof in. If you buy one for your blah blah, you buy one for your WX. Just use rib nuts, make your life easy. And if you want to do the JDM tail light model that works on the blob eye tail lights, I don't think, I don't know if it works on the 06 to 07 Hawkeye tail lights or not, because I know they're different shapes, so I'm not sure if that mod's gonna work. And remember, it is free. JDM tail light mod is free. All you gotta do is, if you ever wanna go back to stock, flip your bulbs back around and just buy a new bulb for your running light on the very end because we broke the running light filament itself. Don't forget, we also got these for sale. Oh, don't ignore this. I was playing with the stick earlier. Yeah, I also went to sick earlier, <laughs> but don't forget, we have the Scan Me sweaters for sale with the logo on the back, the classic logo on the front, first link down below. And we also, remember, we're also trying to hit 1,000 subs by the end of the year. That is the goal. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it. I, I, I feel like we could do it. We might go for 1,000 subs, if you're not sub, hit the sub button, right, kitty? Tell me to hit the subscribe button. Wow. 
tells me I did it. But yeah, he said hit the sub button. All right, catch y'all in the next one. This weekend's adventures. I'm not sure what we're doing, but we'll figure something out like we always do. Peace.